Good day to you everyone, my name is Whistler and welcome back to my Minecraft Hardcore Let's Play series. Now, I thought that I would start off this episode with a short time lapse since I happened to run out of wood last time which is an absolute travesty. I need that wood for chests! So just to get it out of the way, I farmed up a bunch of every wood type. Oak, dark oak, birch, spruce, acacia, jungle, warped and crimson. And while I was at it, I went ahead and farmed up a bunch of sand as well. This was something that I hadn't really done at night time before in this world, and while the mobs did prove to be annoying, it still resulted in some cool moments like this double double phantom kill, which I don't think I'd ever done before. <laughs> I also decided to try and light up the river around my base a little bit more, which resulted in me getting a brand new trident once again. That makes eight tridents in this world, which I think is kind of insane, considering I don't even have a drowned farm. So yeah, we've done a lot of initial grinding already today so far. We've gathered up the resources that I feel like I've been lacking recently. So just below me, we have a shulker of every wood type other than crimson logs. We have some crimson logs here, but honestly, I got bored of farming it. <laughs> so we only have a third of a shulker's worth of that, but that's fine. We have tons of wood for other projects in this world, though. Tons of wood for chests which is fantastic because I've been using a lot of those recently. <laughs> and then just over here, we have the beginnings of a new sand wall. Oh dear. Whistler's farming up sand again. That's that's not a good thing. Oh boy. We all know how that went last time. <laughs> and then just over here, we have all of our nether wart blocks that we got from farming those wood types. And to be honest, I don't really have a use for these, so let's compost them. There we go, let's just stick them all in there. And you might have seen me during that time lapse that I was building some sort of structure down here to farm wood. And this was just me like trying out ideas. Like for another potential wood farm where I could farm logs in bulk. Because the tree farm that I have elsewhere in this world is more for leaves rather than wood. I want something more industrial for logs that I can just like plant all of the saplings and then just harvest all of the logs later. And this is me trying out that idea. We might take this down and rebuild it elsewhere in the world, but I think this is pretty cool so far at the moment. Perhaps we'll build on this more later. Who knows? Now, as of recording, 1.18 has still yet to release, but there is something that I would just like to talk about with that. So, our creep for farm rates, they're gonna fall off a cliff with 1.18, because of the new caves that are going to generate underneath our base. So when we update, I do suspect that we're going to have to light up a bunch more caves. Which is unfortunate, because I need that gunpowder. <laughs> I need it for rockets, and I need it for TNT, and I get through a lot. <laughs> Let me just show you my gunpowder supplies, though, because I have spent a lot of time in the nether over the last year or so, so I haven't really properly recovered since I since the nether explosion, like over half a year ago now. We've got at least 12 double chests of gunpowder though, which is enough to make me happy for now. All of that grinding at the start of the episode though did result in some near broken tools. So let's just park ourselves in the zombie piglin farm. The nether chicken is still alive, clearly. He is the chosen one after all. So let's just get out our shovels and our axes and our hoes and kill some zombie piglins. Oh, that's a lot of XP, okay. But that is all of my tools repaired. We are finally done with that. <laughs> and we've been able to farm up a bunch of gold at the same time. Since we've constructed the barter battery in the last episode though, we now have access to as much blackstone as we could possibly ever desire. And that is a good thing because it allows me to finish off the, uh, the nether monument, or at least that's the hope anyway. Like, one of the things I was hoping to do with it was to replace all of the blackstone buttons with pressure plates, and now I have all of the blackstone to do that with. And I've just been interrupted by phantoms. Go away, please! Oh, hang on. I hear piglins getting hurt. That's not a good thing. Is this farm not as good as I thought it might have been? I did so much testing with this thing. Why are they hurting? Why are they getting injured? Okay. Well, there's only 30 piglins there. I might need to make a few changes to this at some point. That's probably going to have to be the case. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely getting hurt in there. So I'm definitely going to have to try and repair that in some way, unfortunately. Oh, that is a shame. 
But there is something that I have to get on with, though. And it's all of this button replacing. They all need to be turned into pressure plates. And one of the other things that I was hoping to incorporate into this build is actually gold. I would like to make this monument look like it's being gilded. And yeah, that's the plan. We're going to try and incorporate gold blocks into this thing. And just to show everyone the difference between pressure plates and buttons, here's the side-by-side -side comparison from several episodes ago. And the pressure plates are just so much more subtle. They are definitely the better option. We finally have the resources to do that with. So let's get to work. We've got plenty of gold saved up over the last few episodes as well. My gold box was almost full last time. <laughs> And the gold farm is still farming away below me as well. It's awesome. <laughs> I think we'll start off with the gold, actually. So we'll remove this bottom layer just here. And I think we'll make a few stripes going up the nether monument in very particular places. And hopefully, once this is done, it's going to look like the monument has been gilded. And one of the awesome things about gold is that gold pressure plates are also a thing. So we can spawn proof those with that as well. Okay then, we have just finished one of the gold layers. Let's just see how that looks. Um, I think it's alright. Do I like it? I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Maybe I need to add more gold to make it look better. And just like finish off the rest of the build. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. At least it's difficult to tell that there's actually pressure plates on the gold. <laughs> so, out with the black stone, in with the gold, and the buttons shall be gone. And you know what? Let's add some lava. Let's see how that goes. So, this is how the nether monument looks currently. I think I've gone overboard in areas that I probably shouldn't have done. I think I actually prefer the monument to before I actually worked on it today. I wonder if there's too much gold, and I'm not sure about the lava either. Oh wow, just look at all the striders that are trapped down there. <laughs> I didn't intend for that to happen, but whatever. So, I'm going to put it to a Twitter poll. I don't have many followers on there, but we'll see what they say. Okay then, so, I do believe that I need to make a couple of changes to this barter battery. We're going to remove the fence posts that are on either side of the portal. And that should give the piglins just enough space to stop entity cramming. I'm not sure if I've already lost one or not, though. That's the problem. And I don't think that they can see that shulker. That's good. So I can open that just fine. And we're just going to break this obsidian just here. And there should be a fence post. Yep, there it is. We'll remove that. I don't think I'll hit the piglins. There we go. Excellent. So that's worked all right. And now the piglins should have just a little bit more space. And I'm hoping that they won't hurt themselves now. I just think it's weird that they were actually doing that though. I spent so much time testing this in a creative test world and they never did that. It's weird sometimes what happens when you actually build something in survival afterwards. Encounter things you didn't actually expect. I mean, I don't think the fence posts actually needed to be there in the first place. They're sort of a remnant from a from an earlier expandable design. And I don't think I need them anymore, to be fair. <laughs> oh my goodness. That took me down a lot of health, didn't it? <laughs> oh, that gold helmet is rubbish. It's got it's only got Curse of Vanishing on it. Oh dear. Oh, my regen isn't very fast either. I should probably put that on before a blaze sets me on fire or something. <laughs> there you go. We can eat now. I think that's the closest I've got to dying in a while. So it has now been a day since I've put up that Twitter poll. And I've got to say, I got an absolute ton of votes. It was only five, but we'll forget about that. Our future has been decided. The result was that we keep the gold and we don't revert to only Blackstone. But I do think that we should remove the lava because that's something that people were saying in the comments. Like it was keep the gold but remove the lava and perhaps there's a bit too much gold as well. So we're actually going to remove one of the layers of gold as well. So goodbye to this layer. Oh, I forgot about the ghasts. They like to blow up the pressure plates, don't they? Come on, let me shoot you. Stop moving. There we go. One more dead ghast to add to my statistics. Goodbye, lava. You are not a good choice. I quite like the idea of having a pool of something here, though. So, 
We're actually going to use black glass for that. It's going to look like there's some sort of dark liquid here. And it might look interesting in shaders as well. Who knows? How does this look? Does this look better? I don't know if it looks better. I'm glad that I've removed the lava, but maybe I should have left that other gold layer in. Who knows? Let me know your thoughts, everyone, in the comments down below. What should I do with this thing? So I, I That's one of the things I hope to do with this build, is to have like a, a good portion of community input, if you know what I mean. Oh, <laughs> I don't think I'll be running around on the surface of this monument that much, though, because there's a lot of clicking going on. <laughs> I hope that's not too annoying. Here we are, back at a barter battery though. I would like some more blackstone and some more crying obsidian, please. Can you serve me my order, piglins? I'm sure you can. So let's just see how much we've got. How much are in our stores today? We've got a shuttlecar in there, a little bit under there. Okay, that's a fair amount of blackstone just there. I'm glad about that. The rest of these chests should be empty. And we've got a ton of soul sand here as well, actually. We've almost filled up that double chest there. Oh my goodness. Just look at all of my crying obsidian. Wow. I wasn't expecting that much. <laughs> I'm incredibly thankful for that though, because that's something we're using today. Because we are going to be constructing a nether hub out of it. Well, the nether monument is our nether hub, but we're going to be using the crying obsidian to finish it off, if you know what I mean. It's going to look awesome, I promise. <laughs> uh, what are we even going to do with all of this leather? I have no idea. And all those ender pearls as well. I, I don't need that. Oh, the gravel though. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm glad I have access to that now. Well, I had I had access to it before, but now I don't have to farm for it. And one of the reasons I would like the crying obsidian is to make respawn anchors. And to make respawn anchors, you also need glowstones. So we're actually back at our old villager trading hall here. And we're going to try and buy up as much of that as possible. There we go. Give me all of the glowstone, please, villagers. These clerics are fantastic at doing that. Well, this probably isn't enough glowstone for the entire project today, but it's going to be enough for now. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> if needs be, I'll come back and we'll just buy some more. So to craft respawn anchors, all you need is crying obsidian and glowstone. And we're just going to go ahead and craft an entire stack of that. There we go. And we're actually going to be using this as a decorative block. We're going to be using them to serve as like a fence, kind of, toward the uh, the nether portal in the middle of our monument just here. And I think that's going to look really cool. And I know that respawn anchors are like considered absolutely useless in hardcore because what they do is they set your spawn point. And that's not something you typically need in hardcore. But let me tell you that respawn anchors are actually incredibly useful in hardcore. The use of them is to send you to the nether when you come back from the end, because that's where the end portal takes you. It takes you to your spawn point. And that includes respawn anchors. See, they have a use after all. Although that's not why I'm using them today. This is purely decorative and it's gonna be a pure flex as well. <laughs> a very expensive flex of that. And at the side just here, we're gonna include some blackstone stairs and slabs, not the raw variants. I think we'll keep the raw variants in the uh, the middle of our path just here, though. But at the sides, I'd quite like the bricks and the polished. And then to serve as like a fence post kind of thing, we're going to add a couple more respawn angers on top of the ones that are already here. And then in between these, we'll put some black glass panes. And that's going to be able to spawn proof them because I don't actually think respawn anchors are actually spawn proof. And that's something I would like. I don't want gas spawning on these. So we're actually just going to put buttons on top of these ones as well. There we go. And then we can power them up with the glowstone. Not quite nine lives. I've not used these before. <laughs> They're quite a good light source though when you add the glowstone. I've got to say, just got to try and refrain from using them in the overworld. Or you might have uh, some rather explosive consequences. <laughs> but this is the nether. So who cares? I can do whatever I want here. But yeah, this is going to be our nether hub just here. We're going to have like a a respawn anchor entrance to our nether hub. And it's going to be awesome. But on that note, I think we should get to work on constructing the rest of the hub. So I hope you enjoy that time lots, everyone. Let's go.
welcome back everyone. I have pretty much completed the nether hub itself at this point. So, we've got our soul sand roads. We'll replace the soul sand with blue ice at some stage, although we will probably keep the soul sand at the sides. We'll use soul speed there if we want the option to. But, we've got our roads in. We'll have the rails if we want to send mobs anywhere with minecarts. We've got our buttons to spawn proof the other blocks. And the soul speed makes us go speedy. Oh, just look at how fast we go. <laughs> this is pretty cool. And then the plan is to have these roads go all the way off into the distance. I think a good point to plan for and to hope to reach is like a thousand blocks in each direction. I don't know if we'll ever reach that, but it's something I hope to do. And then over here, I have finally added the rings to the monument at the entrance. Well, they're not really rings on a normal ocean monument. They're more like arches. But I've made these go underneath as well, so they're definitely rings now. But I have to say, I'm glad that I have finally included these, especially with the shroom lights. There you go. They look fantastic. And this is the inside of our nether hub. We've got tons of respawn anchors now. This was a very expensive project. <laughs> I have to say, but I think it looks amazing. And then just here, we've got a crying obsidian floor covered by black glass. And I think this was actually inspired a little bit by a project I saw on Hermitcraft like a year ago or so. I think it might have been one of Azuma's projects. And I quite liked that floor. So we're including that within this nether hub as well. So I do believe the only thing I need to do to finish off the monument itself is to add something to each of the four rooms in each corner. And I have to say, I don't really know what I would like to put in these corners at the current time. So if I have any suggestions, feel free to let me know. Like that corner is completely free. This corner has my home nether portal inside of it. So we'll probably have a theme to go with that because this is how I get home. <laughs> This corner over here, unfortunately, is filled up with a lava bucket chest monster. But once we get rid of that, I'm sure we could put something interesting in here, whenever that may be. And then this corner over here does actually have a plan to it. So this monument is supposed to serve as a prison for our piglin over here, King Midas, who is currently not trying to shoot me because of the zombie piglin. He must be absolutely terrified by the zombie piglin in the same boat as him. <laughs> He's probably not having a very good time right now. But yeah, this is going to be a prison for him. And I might herd over some of the Halloween mobs that I gathered last year. And we'll set them up in here to serve as like guards. Or maybe they'll be in league with King Midas. Who knows? But yeah, we'll put them all in cages or something. And hopefully we can make it look good. Now, I can't really use the roads as an entrance or an exit anymore. Well, I can if I want to. But that's not the plan. So the plan is I fly out of the top just there from now on. Uh, let's see what this looks like from the outside now. And as you can see, we've got all four roads going off in each direction by 64 blocks because stacks are easy to work with. <laughs> we'll take that out as far as we can go when we get the resources, of course. But for now, I think it looks pretty cool. I'm glad that we finally added the rings as well. That's just like the final finishing touch to make ocean monuments look really cool. And I'm glad that I finally have it. <laughs> oh, that's a dead piglin, I think. <laughs> We're going to have to make progress on the roof at some stage. I'm just really not looking forward to it. Oh, I wish I didn't have to do it. There's a lot of obsidian up there. <laughs> and in case you're curious, this is what it looks like from below. And I think it actually looks pretty cool from down here. And you can see all of the shroom lights that I've used. They're going to be rather expensive to farm up. We're going to need to set up our uh, warped and crimson wood farm, aren't we, at some stage? Just so that we can get uh, an infinite number of these. Because it's a pain to get them otherwise. Hello, Ghast. Your time is up. Uh, uh, I feel cheated. I think something else that we could do with the, the nether hub roads at some point in the future as well. So in addition to adding the blue ice to them, we can add pylons every now and then to make it look like the roads are supported. And I think that's just going to make it look a little bit cooler. I've got to make a design for that though. <laughs> and I have to say we've gotten very lucky in this episode. I've actually gotten... A second trident with this episode, which I don't think I've ever gotten before. I don't think we've ever gotten two in one episode. So that brings our total to nine. We've got an entire hot bars worth of tridents. And I think that's just insane. <laughs> We're going to have some fun with these. So I got this trident while trying to farm up ink sacks for black dye so that I could craft black glass. And I just happened to get lucky with this drowned here. 
So let's just go right ahead and enchant this bad boy. Let's see what we get. Unbreaking and Loyalty 3. Hopefully I will get like Loyalty 3 and Channeling. That's what I would consider the ideal enchantments from the table. And I have not got that. Oh dear, this is going to take a lot of my levels, isn't it? <laughs> you know what? I don't think I want channeling. This is just going to take all of my levels otherwise. So uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. And we'll just finish them off with books from uh, my villager trading hall. So once we get ourselves a book from that bookshelf, we can buy ourselves some mending books. We can buy ourselves unbreaking and paling if needed. And then that's that trident done. And there we go. That trident's done as well, other than channeling. No, channeling, I think, is the one enchantment I don't have available from my villagers, and that is very unfortunate. So, here we go. I have an entire hot bar's worth of tridents. Isn't that awesome? I can scroll through it, and my appearance doesn't even change. Nothing happens to my hand, and that's just insane to me. <laughs> I didn't think I'd reach nine tridents by episode 59, that's for sure. I thought that would happen by, like, episode 100 or something. So these things are rare. Let's try and throw them all out of my inventory, though. I can throw eight of them. The other one is uh, Riptide. So let's try and just launch them all off into the distance. Okay, one more. Okay, fill the hot bar. Uh, there we go. Uh, oh, one of them ghosted in. That is unfortunate. Okay. Oh, my vision is incredibly buggy right now. But there is a phantom. And I can just instantly hit this guy with the tridents because they all just instantly enter in my inventory again so that I can launch them again to hit the phantom. <laughs> I'm not very good at explaining this, but it's fun. <laughs> right, okay, let's try and launch them all out of my hot bar again. Hopefully this will work. If I'm fast enough, this will be good. Okay, it's not many left. One more. Okay, torches. There we go. <laughs> We now have eight tridents that are going to be following me around. <laughs> oh dear. This looks like a mess. <laughs> oh no, that, that view is not good. But look at how cool this is to just fly around with them. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> look at them swirling around my character. Oh, this is amazing. And I can rip tie it around to... Oh, I wish they didn't look so buggy. If they could, like, swirl around me in a, a better visual way. I don't know how else to explain it, but yeah, that could be better. But eight tridents! Wow. Can I actually hit mobs with these? Is that something that can happen? Where are the drowned? Let's turn on the hitboxes so that we can find them. <laughs> oh, wow, look at that bubble trail. <laughs> That's a lot of bubbles. Right, here's a drowned. Can I hit him with the tridents? No. Oh, That is unfortunate. I was really hoping I could hit the trident so it could have like a... My own kill aura. <laughs> that would have been fun. But sadly, I don't think that is the case. I wasn't expecting that actually. Because you can hit other things with tridents that can't enter your inventory. Like you can totally hit buttons with them. Like let me just show you that real quick. See, I've got plenty of buttons just over here. There we go. We can just jump around next to them. See? It presses them. <laughs> so if I can hit buttons with these, why can't I hit mobs? I get that it's probably so that they don't kill the player, but is there a way to, like, program around that? Because I think it'd be awesome to have, like, a, a vanilla kill aura or something. Like, this, is, this could just be so much cooler. Oh, dear. Oh, this chicken has no idea how lucky it is that I don't have my way right now. <laughs> Oh, this is quite cool to do, though. I could just swing them around myself. <laughs> if only I could direct them like that and just hit something with it. That would be so cool. But alas, no cigar. I think that's enough trident fun for today, though, so let's get rid of these. And we are back in the nether hub once again. Oh, this place is so cool. But there is something that I have yet to do in this episode, and that is clear netherrack. And it's not something I ever look forward to doing, but it's something that must be done if this project is ever 
to see its completion. So I think for today, we'll go for this corner here. We'll slowly progress towards our goal of having a full perimeter around 0, zero here so that our gold farm is just ramped up to the max. But I don't think we'll do every corner because... Be honest, I am getting a little bit sick of the grind. Like, this is taking a very long time. <laughs> I'm not a streamer or anything like that. So this is all just, like, recorded for an episode. And it's it's kind of lonely and boring and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, we're going to try and slow down on the netherrack clearing per episode. But it's still going to be significant regardless. But, yeah, I hope you enjoy that time lapse, everyone. Let's go. Just look at the amount of space that I have now got available just there. It's like I've opened up the nether. <laughs> that was a lot of netherrack, everyone. And that's one corner down. Three more to go, and that will be 257 by 257 block cube. Completely emptied of netherrack, other than the ceiling and the lava lakes. I have to say, though, I don't think I'm a fan of how flat the roof is. So that's something I will have to keep in mind. Like, do I want to do like a proper roof project at some point? I think we're going to leave that issue for future me, though. Future me will come up with a plan. <laughs> Hopefully it's not going to be too grindy, whatever that plan is. <laughs> I will say, though, unfortunately, I did break another pickaxe, everyone. Yes, I know. I'm terrible. Oh, how many pickaxes will I break in this world? There's at least one broken an episode. <laughs> but that's just something we'll have to get over with. I guess that just means that we'll make some more at some point in the future. But as you can see here, the nether chicken has survived the entirety of another episode. Congratulations. I might need to take him out of the, uh, of the gold farm here because I think this is too safe for him. I think I would like it if he was in more danger. Of, like, maybe being burned alive by falling lava or something as I remove the lava lakes. Who knows? But there is a lot of lag in this world at the moment. As you can see by how slow these mobs are moving. <laughs> but, yeah, since I'm here, I should probably farm up some XP for my pickaxe here. It needs repairing. Now, don't jump in my way, nether chicken. But, yeah, I have to say that we've made quite a bit of progress today. We actually have, like, a proper nether hub that we can use now for the future. We've even got, like, a faster mode of travel with the soul sand. In fact, we can even fly through those tunnels if we really want to. It's just got options, and I'm glad that we have those. We'll add some blue ice at some stage in the future, but I don't have access to, like, a proper ice farm at the moment. So that's an issue for future me. But for now, though, just look at this place. It's so cool. Oh. I just wish that I was able to work on this more often. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Hopefully now that I'm going to back off on the netherrack clearing slightly, I'll be able to make episodes ever so slightly more often. Maybe. Who knows? I will say that my job for what I do for a living at the moment, it is quite intensive and it does result in me being exhausted at the end of the day. So it's not really something I could work on too much in a week. But I will get this project done. It will happen. And on that note, I think it's time for me to end. So I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thanks for watching, everyone.